to learning. Mm -hmm. Like you win or you lose, but you're in there to fully experience and then it gets serious afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, and then around like your 20 fights, you should should know how you fight by now. But like I still, I still am learning so much about myself, but I feel like because the, my coach speaks to me the way he does in the corner, I always fight in terms of um, – exploiting other people's weaknesses yeah so seeing patterns and stuff like that and mm. like catching them out like in my last fight every single time um because i fought shannon peak she's tough as nails she's from bailey she's mm. fought like a lot of the local girls who are i was so scared to fight her because i knew she's so big and she's fought literally like um nicola calendar um carrie mck and stuff like that and i'm like well they're such big names <laughs> this is scary but when i fought her um and I knew she'd have really good boxing and I knew every time she stepped on her front foot that she'd put so much weight on it and she doesn't check. So we knew that going into the fight. That wasn't the game plan. I didn't practice low kicks in my fight camp. I just practiced at what I'm good at. And I did like low kicks every now and then. I'm not confident at low kicks. I'm no way. But in that fight, I did millions of them <laughs> and they yeah. landed every single time and like they worked. Um and you like it's like life you can't go in it with a plan but you got to be ready to adapt so i i didn't have confidence in my low kicks but whoop i'm in a fight and i have to and this is how i'm gonna win better start having confidence right now mm. in this moment so i did <laughs> and i won that fight because every time she stepped on her front foot i chopped out her leg yeah. and she it took away her confidence in doing other things yeah, yeah. you take away your powers or if you can't step on that front yeah foot. You can't yeah. establish jab yeah lose power yeah was it what was kind of the most intimidating experience or the most intimidating kind of factor going into it, like your first fights was most intimidating i don't know i don't i don't i don't get scared i get excited like fighting yeah. for, i rather do so many things in life like if i'm sitting at like before a job interview but i'd rather be in the ring right now yeah <laughs> but if i had to pick an experience um, in terms of that it was like a pivotal moment mm -hmm. it would be my fight in thailand yeah. That was absolute ridiculousness and <laughs> like I haven't lost since then because of what I've learned from that. So I replaced Melena, a girl who was at Sutai, her position, and she's pretty – she had for like pro, I don't know specifically, like six or ten fights in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And in Thailand you got to work your way up to certain stadiums, certain opponents in order to be able to fight them. And they just mm -hmm. chucked me in because obviously that gym wanted some money or they just wanted that fight to go. So I was more than happy to fight. I was I just wanted over there to have that experience. Um and when I got when I got there, it was just like so different to Australia where you have like a walkout, you have your whole team there, you get like rubbed down, yeah, like everything feels so good. But when you're in Thailand, it was just like, yep, you're here to fight, quickly put your wraps on. Oh, and then you're sitting there next risk. to your opponent and you're like, and then you walk out, and then I realized she was like 15 kilos heavier than me. Um, and it was just I the fact the fact that she was so big, I just didn't I didn't fight. I had literally just tapped around and try to like sh um, stay away from her as much as I could and outscore her on the outside. But she literally would pick me up and throw me on the ground. And when you get thrown oh. on the ground in Thailand, you lose. Um, and then in between the fourth and fifth round, I got told that she was Thailand champion. So 57 kilos at um, like their version of Thailand uh, boxing championships, TBC. Um, and then, yeah, like from that, what I took from that fight was mm -hmm. me never, ever let the fear of someone being bigger more skillful let me beat them like let them beat me because of that mm. and you could see i wasn't I, my heart was not in it i need to have heart and muay thai so that's what i took from that fight a lot of people who i've shown the video to were like oh that's amazing you went over there and did that but no it's not good enough i was absolute rubbish and i shouldn't ever fight like that again and i never will um and that was my eighth fight my second fight professional um and that was probably her like hundredth um but yes, yeah, since then, uh, that's been one of my little goals. I yeah. want to, I low key want to fight girls bigger than me and more experienced just because I never want to let that hold me back. And I guess yeah. Shannon, in that sense, yeah, we've both weighed in at 55, but she's a 57 kilogram fighter and I'm a 53 kilogram fighter. She was so much taller than me and she was more experienced. And that was like, okay, this is exactly what happened to me in Thailand. So I'm not going to let that, like, this is me testing myself again in the same circumstances, sort of. Mm, if that makes sense. Yep. So, like, I know in long term in my fight career, I do want to fight the girls at 55 because there's, like, a like my role models are at 55 and I want to fight mm. them eventually one day. Um, so I do want to get strong at that way. I feel comfortable at 53, but 55, I don't, but I will take fights at that way, if that makes oh, okay, sense. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's, you want to challenge yourself. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you should, if you 
start keep like continue on to like your strength conditioning, put on some ma- some mass, yeah. some strength. That fifty five will become like yeah, naturally. Yeah, that, that should be that. That should be the plan. I was talking about with Kaylee Reese. Like, um, I can cut down to I can cut down to fifty two, fifty one, but I'll be dead mm. if I cut down to fifty three. It's perfect for me. If I cut to fifty five, it's not even a cut. I'm not even dieting. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. But like the more I go on my career, the older I get as well, I won't be able to cut as much, and I'll just get stronger. Yeah. Um, and learn to fight the style that I need to at fifty five, because okay. I I know I'm going to always be the smaller and yeah. probably. Maybe weaker, like I won't be able to take mm-hmm. as many shots because I am like smaller. Sm- smaller, so I'll get tired more easier. So to be able to adapt my style for when I do fight it that way and mm. not stand there and bang but move. Yeah, evasive. Yeah. Mm, interesting. So, so hypothetically, going to a fight against a bigger opponent, it's more like evasive. So you want to step away? Do you want to kind of stay on the outside with those like with those girls or so? You, you, you're you just got to move. Yeah. I won't be able to – if I stay on the outside, they'll just pick me off. Mm. And if I stay – like, it, yeah, it's going to work, but it's not going to work. So you win the fight. You need to win the fight. So when I do move off and when I am in to score, to take advantage of that, like let my hands go, let my kicks go, and then I'm back out. You know, mm. it's frustrating for them. Do you always have to concede getting hit a couple of times to go in or not? Uh, nah, don't well, get hit. If you train alongside someone called Joshua Day, you don't have to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> he's funny. Yeah, he he's very, very like snaky. So I've, eventually I'll probably learn his a bit of his style, but you don't have to. You, you can learn not to. You can be skillful enough, but sometimes you just can't stop it. But yeah, I always reckon you can learn. Hmm. What's the biggest, so the biggest weakness a, a taller opponent has is their ability to move? Or Yeah, like... I feel like because I'm so small, I'm and like I've got, I'm very mm-hmm. like my cardio is like insane. I can always move all the time, and it's exhausting having to chase someone around as well. Mm. As well as like they can't get in their rhythm because yeah. as soon as they stop, yeah, like I'll like I'll do something, I'll like break that rhythm if that makes sense, and it's frustrating. It's like a mental game when when you fight, especially at the top level, you can be just as skillful and just as strong and just have perfect attributes but if you're not there mentally you're screwed and i think that's the end game in everything so like being able to take that away from someone when you're fighting them is my mm. favorite style yeah. i actually have yeah. a saying for it taking souls <laughs> <laughs> so if, if i even if i that's lose, so lose a fight i'll be like i took their soul I won. yeah <laughs> that's crazy that that's on the that's the third second time i've heard someone say um breaking the rhythm like we were doing some yeah um uh ring work the other day and we'd like working out of the corner and that. And it was all about like breaking the rhythm and trying to get them and then be able to move outside. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good point. Just made me remember. Yeah. Yeah, no, rhythm. rhythm, Like that's the first thing I teach my kids is to have rhythm and like they're standing there and they're like this, the little like legs and the little body and I'm like, good, have rhythm because from there you can block, you can kick, you can reply. Um, And yeah, like I like to call it rhythm as well for that reason, if that makes sense. So I feel like you're strong when you have your rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. Good base. Yeah. I mean, and you're you almost notice, relaxed as you well. You notice it like um, even when Max fought Sing Payak, he could block kick back straight away because he's always back in his rhythm. And that's what I've, as from mm. the very beginning from training, I'd sit there and I'd watch him hit pads and I'd sit there and watch him spar and i just try to emulate that for myself. And like now when I fight, I don't say I'm like him, but like a lot of things I do comes from him and I'm like took in so much from him that you can see it when I do fight. Um, when I fought Sim, because she was southpaw, all I did was block kick back and I slapped my big right kick across her because she was southpaw. Yeah. Your right kick, it just lands beautifully against them like all day. And I could, I, I love doing that. And we were like the same similar size, so I could sort of stand there and bang, if that makes sense. <laughs> stand there and bang. Yeah. <laughs> That's so crazy. People who listen to this podcast probably were like, it's sitting there and bang what and just punch each other in the face. It's crazy. <laughs> mm. They're taking your soul. Yeah. <laughs> taking souls. <laughs> Do you find, like for me, going in, if I was ever to go into a fight, elbows would be one of the things I'd be like, fuck that. Oh, yeah, like you have like a little consensus kind of thing. Like if sometimes <clears throat> if you don't elbow, they won't elbow. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so lucky. I've only been elbowed two times. And yeah. my first time it was a black eye. And then the second time was my last fight and just gave me a little knobbly thing in my head. But yeah. I haven't been cut and I haven't cut someone, which I'm oh. so excited to do. <laughs> you gotta, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Do you – um? Have you had any bad, like any injuries or anything like that to come out of a fight? No, no, Just I get that. I get more injuries mm-hmm. from training. I feel like yeah, like you, when you when you fight, you should be 
You know, you've done all the hard work. Mm. You shouldn't be like damaging yourself that mm. much. What and I'm only little, so I don't get that hurt. Yeah. I'm a little woman. Like my brother, when he fights, it's like, whoop, if you get hurt yourself too much, you might not be able to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, that's yeah. Good point. After your fights, you go you straight back into training the next day or two oh, days I after? used to. Um, mm-hmm. But now I I go in and take photos. I don't train, but I don't train till like the Thursday, Wednesday. So I yeah. give myself like three days off. But even yeah. when I do go back to training, it's not training. It's just moving your body, active yeah. recovery. Yeah. Um, that's a really important thing. A lot of fighters make themselves sick. Even in the lead up to fights, they they train too hard too early. You like if you look at Riddler's gym, they have like two weeks of um power phase and then they have a taper phase. Mm-hmm. That that two weeks of intense training is perfect amount. You don't need to do any like more than that, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and if you're doing a fight camp that's nice and long, then why are you letting yourself get so unfit outside of like when you need to fight? Mm. If that makes sense. Yep. Like there's a perfect balance of overtraining and undertraining. But yeah, afterwards it's just like you need to keep a routine. If you don't go, like if a fighter doesn't go back into the, the gym straight away, it'd be so hard to get back routine. into that routine. Yeah. That's why I still show up and I contribute to like the community in a different way yeah. rather than just training because I wear such a small gym. Like if I don't show up, uh, the vibes change. Like and we're all there for each yeah. other. That's crazy. You go. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what else do you, 